Today I'm sewing and sharing a shirred top with shoulder ties. This is Simplicity 9141. There were two views for this pattern, a dress in two different lengths. As I was looking at the two views, I thought it might also make a nice top. So I've created my own view for this pattern, a top I can wear all summer long, and a project that takes just a little less time than the dress. The shirring for this top is done with independent casings, so you don't have to worry about loading your bobbin with elastic thread. You're just going to be sewing the casings on and then running elastic through each one. It's a very straightforward project with impressive results. So cut out your fabric, mark your notches, and let's get started. Press the top edge of your front piece to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch, all the way across the top raw edge. And once that's pressed, we're going to do a rolled hem here. So you're going to take the raw edge and fold it to the crease and then on the crease and pin in place. Take it to your sewing machine and sew close to that inner folded edge all the way across. And do this for the top edges of both your front and back pieces. We're going to be using half inch wide seam binding to form the casings on the front and back pieces. On your pattern piece, you have lines that you can transfer to the front and back pieces that show us where to place our casings. We're going to place the bottom long edge of the binding right along each of our transferred lines. On each side, allow some of the binding to extend beyond the edge and pin in place all the way across. Once you've pinned that first row of seam binding all the way across, repeat for the next six rows. I've gone ahead and taken each pinned row of seam binding to my sewing machine and I sewed both long edges of each strip of seam binding all the way across. And I've left each end open so that I can insert my elastic. And it's open on both sides. Create all of these rows of casings for both your front and back pieces. Your pattern includes pieces that will guide you on how long to cut each piece of elastic for your size. I've cut these guides to my size and I'm using quarter inch wide elastic. I'm going to cut six pieces total to the length of my upper elastic guide, three for the front piece and three for the back piece. And then I'm going to cut eight pieces total to the length of my lower elastic guide, four for the front and four for the back. I'm going to start first with my upper casing elastics. I'm going to draw it through each casing with a very small safety pin, attaching it to the short end and drawing each of my upper elastics through the top three tunnels. Make sure that as you're pulling it through, you secure one end of your elastic so you don't lose it within your tunnel. Once I've pulled the elastic through and it's out the other end, I'm going to secure it in place with a pin. Then I'm going to sew both short ends of this elasticated area with a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat for your two remaining upper casings. And then for the remaining four casings, grab your lower elastic pieces and guide them through in the same way. The only difference here is that we're going to sew both ends of the casing once the elastic is in with a half inch seam allowance. So go ahead and guide the elastic through your remaining lower casings and secure your edges. Once you've elasticized all of the tunnels, it should look like this on the inside with nicely uniformed visible gathers on the outside. Place your front and back bodice right sides together and we're going to clip from the underarm seam all the way to the bottom of the garment. So we'll start sewing at the bottom four rows of elastic casing. Sew both side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and serge your seams to finish. And remember to start that stitching at that fourth row of elastic and all the way down to the bottom of this bodice piece. For the armhole bindings, we're going to fold both of the short edges to the wrong side by 5 8 of an inch. Then we're going to fold one of the long edges to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch all the way across. So your armhole binding will look like this with both short edges folded to the wrong side by 5 eighths and the top edge folded a quarter of an inch. Mark the center of your armhole binding with a pin. We're going to match this point with our underarm seam. 
Now place the right side of your binding to the wrong side of your dress at the underarm seam and pin in place. Place the short folded edge of your binding at the top of your garment at that rolled hem and pin in place, matching your raw edges and do the same at the other top edge. And then continue pinning both sides. Now go to your sewing machine and sew your binding to the armhole with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you've sewn that edge of the binding to the armhole, take the folded edge of your binding and roll it over this seam so that that folded edge of the binding now just covers our stitching line and pin in place all the way around. And now take it to your sewing machine and edge stitch close to this folded edge all the way across. And repeat all of these steps to attach your other piece of binding to your other armhole. Now we're going to prepare our shoulder straps. Fold your shoulder straps in half the long way, right sides together, and sew the long edges from one end to the other with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn, go ahead and turn it right side out and give that strap a good press. Press both of the short edges of your straps to one side by a quarter of an inch on both ends and repeat all of these steps for all four of your straps. Match one of your shoulder straps wrong sides together with one of the top corners of your garment. The edges of your garment should line up and you wanna place that strap one and three eighths of an inch from the top edge and pin in place. To sew the strap in place, we're going to follow the stitching lines that are on the front of the garment. So following the stitching line that you used on the side to enclose that arm binding, sew vertically down the shoulder strap until you reach the end. And then sew horizontally along your casing stitching, which should nicely fall in line with the bottom of that shoulder strap. And also stitch horizontally along your top most casing stitches. I'm also going to stitch horizontally on this side as well, catching the inner edge of my shoulder strap as well. Do this at all four corners for all four straps. So now here is my bodice so far, with each end of the strap attached to each top corner. For the loose end of each strap, I'm going to fold that quarter inch pressed edge an additional quarter of an inch, just rolling it on top of itself, edge stitch that in place for each of the straps for a clean finish. And now to finish the hem of the garment, I've taken it to my ironing board and I've pressed up the lower edges to the wrong side by half of an inch, and I'm just going to do a rolled hem here. I'm going to take the raw edge and fold it to the crease and on the crease, and then I'm going to edge stitch all the way around the bottom of the garment. And once it's hemmed, you're all done with your blouse. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.